Today, we're going to be talking about wrapping asynchronous library code with promises so we can use that code with suspense. And to do that, we're going to be wiring up this simple demo with Firebase. Right now, we can see the home page is rendering this dashboard component, and we're just hard coding in a name. But let's actually get Firebase wired up so we can fetch our user from the back end. I'll start by pasting in uh, this boilerplate Firebase code, which is just how we get Firebase uh, kind of initialized in our app. And now to actually get the current user, we're going to use on auth state change uh, this function import from Firebase auth. Now this sets up an observer that fires a callback. So we'll need to put this inside of a use effect and run this once our component mounts. So we can call on auth state changed. We pass in our auth right here and then a callback uh, that gets the Firebase user. Now to actually render this Firebase user, we need some state. So we'll create a new uh, state variable for our user and then call set user Firebase user. And then right here, we should be able to just render user.displayName. Okay, since this code only runs in an effect, we need to guard against the first render. And now we see our dashboard rendering with our user photo baggins right here. So this is great, but what if we don't have a user signed in? I can actually come here to the console and uh, type in sign out, and that's gonna kill our current session. And we see uh, the dashboard unrenders, but we don't wanna just show nothing. We actually have a sign in message component, which we can import. And now we'll see a message that you need to sign in. So now we've got both states covered, but let's go ahead and sign in again. And uh, let's take a look at what happens when we refresh the page. So we can actually see some funny behavior here. And if I go ahead and actually throttle these uh, API calls that Firebase is making, we'll see uh, there is kind of an invalid state here when we're actually loading the data from Firebase, but the session hasn't been verified yet. And of course, this is because our auth state change code is running in an effect after mount. So uh, how might we fix this? Well, we could add some new loading state, but ideally we'd be able to use suspense because this is kind of a perfect candidate for it. The home component is not ready to render while Firebase is fetching, and ideally it would just be able to tell its parent that and suspend the application. But there's no clear way to do this. All we have is this observer that fires this callback. So we need some sort of bridge in order to use suspense. Ideally, we'd be able to say something like, if we don't have a user, let's throw a promise. So where are we gonna get this promise? Well, let's just make one right here. Promise takes in a resolve, and then it does some asynchronous work. Okay, we're seeing the suspense error. It says a React component suspended while rendering, but no fallback UI was specified. Let's pop open our root app component. Here we see our static header and our dynamic page component, which we can now wrap in a suspense boundary. And for a fallback, we'll go ahead and use our spinner. Okay, check it out. We've got our page component suspending and uh, it's rendering this boundary right here. But of course, this thing never goes away because we never resolve this promise. Let's drop in a set timeout that resolves after two seconds. And we'll just call resolve right here. Let's go ahead and reload the app. And we still don't see that spinner going away. Let's pop open the console. And I'm going to come to my home component and just add a log that says rendering. Look at that. <laughs> our component is <laughs> in some sort of loop. And uh, if I can refresh this, we'll see that we see the rendering message. It waits two seconds and then uh, React goes bananas here. And uh, you can see why in our code, if we don't have a user, this component is going to keep throwing this promise. And so uh, React is going to keep trying and trying to render this. It's going to throw every time. We need some way to update this value. But we can't update the value from within our promise 
using set user because we don't have access to this. So for now, let's just create a new user variable here in module scope. In the set timeout, we'll say user equals display name Sam Selikoff. We'll just set this to kind of a dummy user. And now when we save this and refresh, check it out, we've got our app back again. We only see the rendering happen twice and um, this is suspense basically working for us. So this was kind of a light bulb moment for me, seeing how uh, React tries to attempt to re-render components that have suspended, waits for the promise to resolve to re-attempt to render them, and then you know once we get past this line of code, all this other code will actually execute. But we don't wanna use this dummy data here, we wanna actually use our off state change code. So let's come up and get rid of the set timeout, this and this. And let's paste in this all state changed handler. We'll move resolve in here. And then instead of calling set user, we'll just say user equals the Firebase user. Check it out. Refresh. Look at that. Our app is suspending while this uh, promise exists and is still pending. Once we set up this observer and we resolve it, we have updated this variable. And then by resolving the promise, we tell React to go ahead and try to re-render this component again. Now uh, let's just clean this up, clean this up. And let's be good citizens here. This observer gives us an unsubscribe function, which we can just call right after here so that this code is not running over and over again. And if we come back and refresh, we'll see exactly the same behavior. Now, this isn't bad, but it's kind of a bummer that we're creating our own promise here. We have user in module scope. If you're thinking ahead, you'll be able to anticipate, you know, this is not the most scalable or composable architecture. So uh, fortunately, there's a library that can help us clean out some of this code. And I already have it installed. It's called suspend react. And it gives us this little function right here that we can use directly in our component. So suspend comes from suspend react. And the first parameter is an async function. It's a function that returns a promise. So if we can pass in some async function to suspend, then this library will take care of actually throwing the promise and triggering suspense for us. So how might we create an async function? Well, we have a promise right here. All we need to do is return it. And boom, we have an async function. Now let's call this get initial off state. We'll use it right here. We'll get rid of this code. And we need one more param, which is an array of keys. Now this is used to keep track of all these different promises on a global cache. For our purposes, we can just use initial off state as a key, and that'll be enough to identify uh, this promise for us. Let's save this, come back, refresh, Look at that, it's working exactly as before, but we're not done yet. Instead of using this free variable, suspend react actually returns whatever value our promise resolves with. So if we just pass in the Firebase user to resolve, get rid of this user, then we can say let user equals suspend, come over here, refresh, and check that out. Everything's working, great. We have no free variable. Uh, not only that, we have no state and no effect in our component. We've managed to use suspense and remove all the asynchronous code from this component. We have hidden all of this kind of third party asynchronous code up here outside of our components rendering cycle. And uh, all we did was just wrap a promise and resolve it inside of this callback. Uh, now this component is super slim. It's actually synchronous. Again, just like before when we were throwing our own promise, when React hits this call and this promise is in a pending state, uh, it's gonna suspend, which is gonna throw a promise and stop execution. React's gonna wait for that promise to resolve and then try to render it again. So the second time it renders, this is going to resolve synchronously with the value of our user and um, React will actually be able to go on past this line 
and render this. So we don't even have this loading state here anymore. We're able to handle it upstairs in our app component at the root. Uh, and now we have that suspense boundary if we add anything else to our tree. And uh, this is just a really cool pattern. This library makes it super simple so you don't have to manage a global promise cache or anything like that. But I thought this was a really nice little simple bridge between you know code that might not give you an async function, but instead give you something like an observer with a callback. If Firebase gave us a get initial auth state async function, we wouldn't even need to do this. We could just pass that directly into suspend and get our component to suspend. But it's nice to be able to work with promises. Once you understand kind of the basics of promises, uh, you can get pretty fancy and flexible and turn kind of any asynchronous code or any work that needs to be done into an async function, which you can then use to suspend your React components. Now, if you've been paying close attention, you might have noticed we lost something from our original implementation that used an effect. And uh, that is if we went ahead here and signed out, our UI doesn't update. Now, if we were to refresh, uh, we do see a correct app here. We see the loading spinner, it's really quick, but we do see that parent loading state and then we see the need to sign in. Again, if we sign in, we don't see the UI update but on initial load, we've taken care of this problem. So uh, we're gonna talk about how to fix that problem in a future video. But for now, this is a great way to get arbitrary asynchronous code to suspend on the initial render of your app. And uh, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna put all this up on GitHub as always. If this is your first time hearing about suspense with data fetching, which is as of this recording, still kind of experimental, it's not fully supported yet. Um, it will be at some point in React 18. Check out my last few videos. I've been making a lot of videos in suspense. And let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Otherwise, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one.